you turn to the book of Galatians, chapter 3, 26 through 29 will be the foundational passage for our study tonight. Thank you for coming our way. Good to see all of you here, especially you who are not members of the body of Christ. Thank you for coming our way. It's so many folks I haven't seen in a long time. Terry Joe, it's good to see you and your wife there. I was wondering about you. I didn't hardly recognize you, but you still look good. <laughs> and there are others here that I've seen, haven't seen in a long time. Thanks for coming out tonight. In the book of Galatians, uh, Paul is defending his apostleship, and he's dealing with Judaizing teachers who were saying that men, the Gentiles, had to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. We find that in Acts chapter uh, 15. But he said to the Galatians, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him who call you into the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not. But in Galatians chapter 3, it, it's broken, broken down like this. We, verse 19 of chapter 3, we have lesson from the law of Moses. Chapter 3, 20 to 22, we have limitations of the law of Moses. And then 23 to 25, we have locked in by the law of Moses. That's the context. And the last part of it, verse 26 through 29, we have liberty in the Lord. Patrick Henry said years ago, give me liberty or give me death. He was talking about a different kind of liberty. Tonight, we're going to talk about liberty in the Lord. When I say liberty, I mean freedom. And when I say in, I'm talking about the location. And when I say the Lord, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. That's the person. Now, first of all, uh, verse 26, we're going to look at the pattern for liberty. Notice what it says. Paul said, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now watch this. We have the creed. Stay with me. Creed simply means I believe. So we have the standard, our belief, and the new faith. Spiritual family, for ye are all the children of God. There are only two classes of people in the world, and that is the saved and the unsaved. All of the saved are in the body of Christ, Ephesians chapter 5. Two classes of people, saved, unsaved. All of the saved are in Christ, in his church. And there's no such thing as denominationalism part of the body of Christ. Denominationalism is not part of the body of Christ at all. So if you're here tonight, we're not here to offend, but to teach God's word. We're talking about liberty. Liberty is only in one place, and that is in Christ. Get this now. So we have the spiritual family. We have the first Adam, the Bible teaches, in Acts 17, that God made of one blood all nation of people that dwell upon the face of the earth. That was the first Adam. So everybody's related. But there's a last Adam Paul talked about, and that's Christ Jesus. Now, all of us came from the blood of the first Adam, and if you're going to be in the spiritual family of God, uh, amen, it's going to take some blood in the plan. And that last Adam shedded his blood 
So if you are in Christ, Jesus, you are blood brothers and sisters in Christ. Because there's life in the blood. Now, then we have, we have a spiritual family, but also we got system of faith. System of faith. Jude said, Jude uh, 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you, listen to this now, that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once and all delivered to the saints. Brethren, I don't deliver no gospel. I preach the gospel. The apostle delivered it. Are you listening? Y'all are mighty quiet tonight. What's going on? Is it cold or what is it? I can't even get a grunt out of you, Jimmy. One system of faith. That one system of faith is the gospel. Paul said in Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now listen to him. He says in verse 17, for therein, look at this, therein, therein what? The gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written to just to live by faith. If it's not in the gospel, it's not right religiously. Now, brethren, we got preachers and elders and members of the churches of Christ. They don't want to offend anybody. Well, I don't want to offend anybody either. But somebody needs to tell the truth. Amen. The Bible says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. What God considered right, he put it in the gospel. It may be old, ancient, and honorable, but if it's not in the gospel religiously, it is not right. The Baptist church is not in the gospel. The Methodist church is not in the gospel. Jehovah's Witness, said, and even down here, the Elks Lounge, a large or something, is that right? That's not in the gospel. Some of y'all looking at me funny and say, Brother Shannon, what are you doing? I know what I'm doing. But you know, people got to hear this. Now, wait a minute. You know, I was at, uh, down in the meeting. By the way, let me say this about the song lady. There, I don't want to lose it. When you get old sometimes, you forget stuff. This young man right here that did the song service tonight, he needs to be commended. Amen. This is a little excursion. Just stay with me. I remember back in 1990 in Clarksville, Texas, I was in a two-week tent meeting. His daddy sang for me in the song service. And I just found out his daddy passed. It hurt me so bad. But his daddy was an outstanding song leader. And this young man, he, son, you keep the way you're going, you, you're going to learn how to sing one of these days. <laughs> you know how to lead song service. That's a little excursion. We'll get back to it. But therein is the righteousness of God revealed. I remember being in that tent meeting down there, Pentecostal preacher jumped me. I was a young fella then. I was young. Well, I was 40 something. Call that young. And what he got upset about is because the UPC, y'all ever heard of UPC? UPC, United Pentecostal Church, is not in the gospel. I said, we don't need to go any further. You mean to tell me you are mad because the UPC is not in the gospel of Christ? And a lot of people get all upset, and some people don't even know that. I remember another time in a tent meeting down in Marshall, Texas, uh, Terry Joe, I think it was 600 and 2,500 tent, and I was preaching uh, one night, and a young man came out, about 17, 18 years old, obeyed the gospel. Well, uh, the next night, we was at the fellow's house, and the lady was, of uh, the child was, she was upset. And she said, I want to meet with the elders and the preacher, because uh, y'all got my son in a cult. And I was sitting over there eating, eating something. And I said, no, I said, I'll tell you what you all do. Leave her alone. You need to talk to me. I was the one to preach. I said, what church are you in? She said, I'm in the Baptist church. 
I said, now, let me show you something. In Romans, Romans uh, 16, 16, the Bible says, salute ye one another with a holy kiss. The church of Christ salute you. I said, okay, I'm going to put a circle over here now. Now, you call the church of Christ a cult, but I can read where Paul said, the church of Christ salute you. Now, why don't you put over here the Baptist church? You're going to call this a cult, and this is in the Bible, and this is not? She calmed down. The hell was just shaking. The preacher was shaking. I said, I'm not scared of this lady. Come in. And you know what, Terry Joe? The next night, she and her husband, she, I guess her husband, I don't know whether he was a hen pick. He may have a hen house ways, but he, he was dragging along behind and wasn't saying nothing. And they came to the meeting the next night. I don't know whether they ever obeyed the gospel, but they heard it. Now, my point is, if it's not, the reason I came out of the Roman Catholic Church, because the Roman Catholic Church is not in the gospel. And that system, that, that government organization system is not in the gospel. That's why I'm out of it. If you're here tonight, listen, don't take my word. Don't take my word. Do your own research. Why are you a member of the Church of Christ? Because your mother is? I'm not a member of the Church of Christ because he is or Terry Joe or anybody else. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because I did my own research. I am convicted and I'm convinced that the Bible is right. I'm talking about the faith now. Talking about the faith. The one faith. Is it in the gospel? Uh, you mean to tell me that? Uh, uh, let me just slow down a little bit here. The Bible tells us in Luke 8, 11, that the seed is the word of God. He's got that. Now, I was in Vietnam 67, 68. I never had sugar baby watermelons. We all have heard of sugar babies. Watermelons. Y'all some funny people in Arkansas. <laughs> Never heard of sugar baby watermelon. They're little round mold. You know, black people love watermelon. <laughs> and uh, I, I was uh, over there in Vietnam, and I said, man, where do you, man, I see the sweetest watermelon. And I said, man, you know, it would be a good thing if I could grow uh, uh, just some kind of way, plant some seeds over here, and plant it, put a lot of fertilizer on it, and make the watermelon vine grow all the way to the United States of America. And I could have some watermelon, some sugar baby watermelon in Memphis, Tennessee. And the guy said, man, that is stupid. He said, all you got to do is get some seeds and take them over there and plant them. He said, I'll guarantee you if you plant seed, the, the same watermelon you get here, you take the seeds and plant them in America, you get sugar baby watermelon. The seed of the kingdom is the word of God, and the word of God never produced a Baptist. Our Jehovah's Witness are Seventh-day Adventists. It only produced one church. How do you make a bill the church of Christ? The seed. What's the seed? It's the word of God. The word of God won't produce but one church, and all its members are called Christians. That's it. That's not near about it. Now, this is what people get all upset about because man want to do stuff his way. One faith. Oh, boy. I need to get on with my lesson here. That's a little excursion. I'll get back on to the mic course here. But I want to talk about the one faith. What faith? Somebody said, what faith are you? I said, it isn't but one. If you're going to ask me what faith are you, just remind me, what Jesus do you believe in? What Lord? What you got it. Well, so the pattern, pattern for liberty, is the one faith. All right? Then we have the place of liberty. We have the Christ or the Savior, our blessings, new freedom. Watch this. For you are all the children of God by faith. What is the position? In Christ. Listen to this. In Christ and in the church, you're talking about the same thing. Now, brother, listen to me. Sometimes we so-called give the plan of salvation here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, 
behave and broadcast. We do that. But the plan of salvation is the church. It's the church. What? Brother, don't take light of the church. Why? Because it cost the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. So watch it. In Christ, uh, in Ephesians 1, uh, we have the book of Ephesians. We've got the church is the fullness of Christ. And in Colossians, which is a parallel epistle to Ephesians, it is the uh, fullness of Christ. Uh, Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. Now, in, in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, it says, you got it, brother? Let's read it right quick. Did you get a bigger Bible? Well, all right. Okay, then maybe you got your contacts on tonight. All right, what does it say? For, for, look, look at this, brethren. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the God head bodily. Keep reading. And listen, you are complete in Christ. Now, when you're complete in Christ, what's in Christ? Look at the things that are in Christ. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Prayer is in Christ. Brethren, prayer is not outside of Christ in his church. If folks in the world got the same privilege that I have with pray, praying, why be a member of the church? And Galatians said, for because you are sons of God, God sent for the spirit of the son where you can cry, Abba, Father. So if the people in the world can pray to God just like I can, why be a member of the church? We are complete in him. When you're in Christ, you're in the church of Christ. There's no such thing as being in Christ and in some denomination. There's no such thing as a, oh, brother, I, I, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I was preaching like this in one place, and the elder said, we're going to cut all that stuff out that he said because he offended too many people. Well, bless your heart. I'm glad they don't cut my TV app program out. Glad they're not in charge of that, Jimmy. Brother Shannon, you, uh, I'm, not, I'm not bad with the denomination, Pete. There's some fine people, more than But they just hook, got hooked up with something that's not in Scripture. And a lot of us got folks that's in, in these different churches and organizations and things. And, you know, my, my own brother and sister mad at me right now. And, I, you know, I can't sleep at night. I worry, I roll and tumble from side to side because I'm preaching the truth and they mad at me. Mad at me about what? Because I preach the truth. I tell you, your church is not in the scripture and what you're doing and all this silly stuff, ignorant, moronic stuff, heathen stuff that you're doing is not right according to the scripture. Now you're going to get mad at me. Well, let me get on here. Oh, that's pretty good. Position in Christ. Watch the person in Christ. People of liberty. Watch this here. For as many of you as have been. That's Christian. Now, brother, let me do that. It's too much. You'll never find in the book of Acts, the book of conversions. Amen. Here's something you'll never find in the book of Acts. Listen, listen to it. You'll never find in the book of Acts where the apostles or anybody that was taught what to do to be saved, you'll never see where he told a saint to be baptized. And you'll never find in the book of Acts where a sinner was ever told to pray. Check it out. Baptism is not for members of the church. Baptism is not for folks that are members of the church. Baptism is for sinners, alien sinners. Simon of Sauce, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Acts 8 and verse 12, When they believed Philip, preaching the thing concerning the kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Brethren, preach Christ, you get them in the water. <coughs> then verse 14 says, Simon also believed. What do you mean? He obeyed the gospel. But again, guess what happened? He reverted back to his old ways. He thought he could buy the gift of God with money. And you know what? Peter told him, thy heart is not right with God. You know what Peter told him? You think Peter told him, 
Now, you, you need to be baptized again. No. Baptists say he wasn't converted. Peter told him to repent of this thou weakness and pray God. See, there's two laws of pardon for saints and for sinners. For sinners, faith, repentance, confession, baptism, that's alien sins. But once you get in the church, you obey the gospel and you sin, you don't have to be rebaptized. You got to repent. He told Simon the to repent of this thou weakness and pray. Brethren, do you believe that? Well, that's a little, I'll get back here to the lesson here. Amen. I've got to do this. So, Christians, amen. <clears throat> For as many of you that has been baptized into Christ. Now watch this. We have a Christian. When you say baptized into Christ, what do you mean? There's a change. Brother, you cannot be baptized and stay in the same place. Baptism is a little word of transition. You got it? Now if you can convince me that I'm saved before I'm baptized, you'll never baptize me. Why? Because I know baptism will move me. You see that? Baptism will move me, Jimmy. So you're going to, if I'm already saved and you baptize me, you're going to baptize me in an unsaved state. We are baptized into Christ from the power of darkness to the kingdom of God to his son. Is that all right? Now, then we are covered, baptized into Christ. That's the change. Covered, have put on Christ. Satan re-robed us with sin. But Christ will re-robe in Christ. He unrobed us, said Satan did, but we're re-robed in Christ. We are in Christ. We're put on Christ. We got a new royal robe. Do you believe that? Yeah. Boy, y'all, I'll tell you what. Man, I don't know what I'm going to have to do to get. Am I putting you to sleep? <laughs> we're complete in Christ. What do you mean complete? We're talking about spiritually. And brethren, let me point this out. Some of my brethren have missed this. The most, well, there are two types of blessing. There are spiritual blessing, which are eternal. There are physical blessing, watch it. They're earthly, they're temporal. What do you focus most on, mostly on? Spiritual? Brother, let me tell you some spiritual blessing, eternal blessing. God, who is the Savior of all men, would have all men to be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth. The greatest blessing you could ever receive in this world is forgiveness of sin. Yeah, amen. All right. So we're covered. Now we have, amen, partnership in liberty. Cohesiveness or support, our bonding, new fellowship. Brother, I keep so much. <laughs> oh, man. Fellowship. Oh, boy. That's not big enough. Turn to Acts 2 and verse 42. I'll do this right quick so they can see this. All right. Acts 2. Look. Acts 2, 42. The Bible tells us in Acts 2, 30, well, 38, they cried out, and men said, men and brethren, they were pricked in their heart. After Peter had preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, Acts chapter 2, verse 21 and following, verse 36 said, and, uh, and when they heard that they were pricked in their heart, verse 37, and, and they cried out and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter told them. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they that are glad to see the word were baptized. Now, the reason you won't be baptized because you ain't glad to see the word. They that are glad to see the word were baptized. And the same day there was added in them about 3,000 souls. And the Bible says in verse 42, and they, what they, the ones that obeyed the gospel, they continued, go ahead and read it. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine. Wait a minute. Doctrine. Doctrine. Doctrine first. Brethren, doctrine comes first. Doctrine. We've got the doctrine of God. We've got the doctrine of Christ. And we've got the apostles' doctrine. we got the, they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. What else? And fellowship. Wait a minute. A-N-D. And 
in fellowship. Wait a minute. If your doctrine is right, we, if your doctrine is not right, we can't fellowship you. I don't care if you're in the church of Christ or not in the church of Christ. If your doctrine is not right, I can't fellowship you. Doctrine first, then fellowship. What else? And, and in breaking of wait, wait a minute. You won't know about the Lord's Supper until you go to the doctrine. You won't know who to fellowship unless you go to the doctrine. If the doctrine is not right, brother, you can't fellowship them. What else? And in prayer. Wait a minute, in prayer. How you going to pray and you not uh, have no obeyed the doctrine? What else? And fear came upon Whoa, boy. So I, I want to point this out. Doctrine first, then fellowship. If you, we can't fellowship, you know why we don't fellowship denominational people? Sometimes, well, we just, just want to be different. No, the doctrine of Christ makes us different. The reason we can't fellowship the first Christian church is because the doctrine is wrong. They're messed up in doctrine. Now, there's no, no authority for mechanical instruments and music. Nowhere in the apostle doctrine. Nowhere. And my brethren at home, they started something, Terry Joe at home, that uh, I don't know if y'all have that problem over here or not, about church autonomy. You know, you know. well, uh, we, we are self-government, self-rule. We have our elders in our own congregation. We do what we want to do, and nobody can say anything. That's wrong. If you bring mechanical instruments and music in this church, i got the right to say something to you. You're preaching to everybody else. And if you, if you don't follow the doctrine, bring a mechanical instrument to music in. A women preacher, talk to them. The doctrine is messed up, so therefore I can't fellowship. You know what, brother? We need to tell brother that. Oh, boy. I'm all right. Well, that's, that's, a, that's pretty good, isn't it? So, boy, that's, that's good here. I had to get this fellowship in. David said, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now, I think it was, I don't, I'm not, I don't know if anybody here old enough to remember N.B. Hardin. Anybody here remember Brother Hardin? I guess I'm the old, old, only old person here. I read it somewhere, Brother Hardin, I think Brother Hardin said, there's a difference between unity and, and unity. Take two cats and tie their tails together and throw them over a uh, clothesline. There, <laughs> there's union, but it's not unity. <laughs> Are you following me? Now, uh, amen. That, that's good. And well, cohesiveness and our support, our bonding, new fellowship, no spiritual differences. Look what it says. There is neither Jew Agree. No social differences. There is neither bond or free. No sexual difference. There is neither male or female. No separate deliverer. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. There's a war going over there in Israel and overseas there, the West Bank and all that stuff. You know what they're fighting about? You know what they're fighting about? See, let me just kind of do a little excursion here. If you know what Abraham and Sarah did when they said, uh, why don't you go and lay with her? It may be that God wants you to take this Egyptian woman and have a child by her. He did. His name was Ishmael. Is that right? And the mama's name was what? Hagar. Wait a minute. Had Abraham, if he had kept doing what God said to him and trusted in God, they wouldn't have that fighting over there today. And let me say this now, brother. The Jews over there in Israel, they're human beings. Listen to me. They are not God's chosen people. The chosen people, the Israel of God today, is members of the body of Christ. Galatians 6.16. 
the Israel of God are members of the churches of Christ. Listen to me. Our foreign policy is built on some stupid stuff that denominational people in this country said, if we don't help Israel, it's all right to help Israel because they are allies, but don't bring the Bible in it. Now, it, there's all those Jews over there. There's not a one over there can tell you what tribe he's from. <clears throat> Ask him. So what tribe are you know, 12 tribes? What tribe are you from? Paul would say he was from the tribe of Benjamin. Ju Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Now, there's not a Jew nowhere. I said, ask him one time, so what tribe are you from? They can't tell you. Yes, it's probably this, that they were started, God stopped it. Why? Because all this thing, you know what? These Jews, even during the time of Paul writing this letter, they thought that they were better than the Gentiles. And they tried to put the parts of the law of Moses on them as circumcision. And certain foods you can't eat. No, that's over. That's over. That's over. Jew or Greek, watch this here. They need a bond or free. Oh, boy. <coughs> Promise of liberty. Where, where, where's my time? How much time? Oh, oh, well, I got a long time, man. <laughs> like Brother Ford Wallace preached so long, I tell you what, you, you all think I preached a long time if Brother Wallace was here. I tell you what, you have to bring your, your, your beddies with you, I tell you. <laughs> we have partnership in liberty. Brethren, can we get along in churches of Christ? Now, you know, a lot of times, uh, we're having problems in church of Christ. It's not a doctrinal issue. It's personal stuff. Personal stuff. Brother, don't, don't do that. <coughs> Take the low side. Be like Abraham. Abraham said, Abraham said to Lot, uh, for, for we be brethren. And you know what? That's what exactly what the devil wants to happen. You know, we got good doctrine because we got the doctrine of Christ. But do we love one another? Oh, boy. Wait a minute. We got good doctrine. Do we love one? Do we really love each other? Do you love the brotherhood? Now, I'm not talking about the love that, well, just, just, oh, I just so love you so much. I'm talking about love, agape love, with your brother or sister, even your wife and children. When they do wrong, can you forgive them and still love them? <clears throat> Sometimes in churches of Christ, I've seen it over the years. A brother messed up, an elder, a preacher. I know some elders that messed up real bad. But guess what they did? They repented. And the, some of the brotherhood blackballed. What? What is that? Somebody in this congregation do something wrong, they repent of it? Watch it. You can't forgive them? Oh, I just can't forgive him. Look like he ought to know better. What you do wrong? Oh. Yeah. That's free. Promise of liberty. Look at this. The covenant of the square, our birthright, new future. Watch this now. And if ye be Christ, if you are in Christ, if you belong to Christ, you're a member of the church of Christ, that's our redeemer. Right? Then are ye Abraham's seed, our relationship. Brother, let me tell you something. That stuff that's going on overseas, I really hate to see it. And I can't do anything about it, but uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to be preached. The only thing that's going to solve the problem of the world is the gospel. Right. Not politics. That, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. The gospel of Jesus Christ is de designed to bring unity. You got it? You start looking at spiritual stuff and spiritual values. You got that? Not some physical. But they don't want the gospel. That's the only panacea for peace in the world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 15, uh, uh, the gospel of peace. What is peace? Peace is remission of sin. When you preach the gospel of peace, 
you show people how to have peace with God, and peace with God simply means remission of sin. When people don't have remission of sin, they do not have peace with God. That's what's wrong over there. I ain't preaching politics, but I need to bring that in. Our rights and heirs according to the promise. Oh, I got so much to deal with here, I guess. We're going to do this quickly here. I may go 10 or 15 minutes on it. Perfect. Is that all right? Perfect. You see that? Got it? We got a perfect layout. Who did it? God. Read it. Ephesians chapter 1, 10 and 11 says what? That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one. Gather together in one. All things in Christ. Keep reading. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Read it. Counsel of his own will. God didn't need any help when he worked us out. Perfect layout. We got a perfect Lord. 1 Peter 1, 19. You have it there? I want to read it. What does it say? But with the precious blood of Christ. Read it. As of a lamb without blemish and without He was a perfect Savior. He lived a perfect life. He com com completed the perfect plan for man's redemption. Perfect law. What does it say? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Wait a minute. The perfect law of liberty. Wait a minute. What is the perfect law of liberty? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we don't have any excuse. Preach, Brother Shannon. All right. Perfect law of liberty. What else does it say? <coughs> what? He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Of the what? Of the work. Do of the work. We got a perfect law. Then we have perfect liberty. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 25. What does the record say? Wherefore he is able also. He is able. Christ is able also. To save them to the utmost. Some, wait a minute. Sometimes people go to First Peter. Uh, one of the Peters. And say. If the righteous scared to be saved. Brethren, ain't no righteous scared to be saved. Nothing. You better re read it in the context and, and what, what was going on at Jerusalem because Christ is able to save us to the utmost. Somebody said we're going to scare to be saved. I don't believe that at all. We're going to be saved to the, he's able to save us to the utmost. Amen. Perfect life. What did it say? All right. Got it? I, I'm working him tonight. Y'all may not be getting your money out of him, but I'm getting my money out of him tonight. <laughs> what does it say? Be ye therefore perfect. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mature. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. All right. Perfect life. Perfect live. Oh, what does it say? For in many things we offend all. Up. Up. <laughs> I've been married to Terry Joe. I don't know if you've been married. I've been married 56 years. And it took me a long time to learn when my wife is feuding, fussing, and fighting, just shut up. <laughs> you know, when a skillet, you take a skillet out of the oven with cornbread in it, and it's hot. It's hot. Don't put your hands on it. You better get a, a dry, don't get a wet rag. Get a dry rag and pull it out. You can't hold it on, but if you put a wet rag on it, it's going to burn you fast. <laughs> Take it out and put it over there. Don't mess with it because it's still hot. When your wife or husband are hot, keep your mouth shut. Sometimes brothers act crazy in the church, in the local congregation. When they get through acting crazy, just let them calm down, then you can talk to them. Can't talk to them. Somebody's mad and upset, all emotional. Well, you don't talk to them. Shut up. Because they're going to say the wrong thing, and you're going to end up saying the wrong thing. 
So somebody got to have some sense. Read it again. <coughs> You want to be a perfect man? Look at that. Perfect lips. Perfect labor. What did it say? But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I got to close out now. Somebody said a pitch is worth a thousand words. For a person to be saved. They are facts that must be believed. They are commands that must be obeyed and promises that will be received. I do this just about every time I preach now because sometimes we forget about what Jesus did for us. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried. He was resurrected and he ascended back to heaven. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11. Jesus Christ worked the works of Christ in man's redemption, salvation, and mediation. Brethren, listen to me. He took his blood and he paid for the church with his blood. The Bible tells us in John 19, 34 through 36, the soldier came to Jesus and found him already dead. Didn't break his leg. Because I think in Exodus predicted that none of his bones should be broken. And the soldier took a spear and pierced him in the side. And the Bible says, forthwith came out blood and water. And you can't be saved without either one of them. Blood and water. Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, Luke chapter 23, 37 through 38, written in Hebrew, written in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, right? What do you mean, written in uh, Greek? That's the language of philosophy. Latin, that's the language of government. And Hebrew, that's the language of revelation. Trilingo. Now watch this now. That meant that the person on the cross here is going to be better or greater than any philosopher the world has ever known. His government is going to be greater. And watch this. Revelation, the Hebrew people need to know that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the promised Messiah. Watch this. Are you listening to me? Watch this. He was a Jew. He shed his blood. He purchased one church for all people. You believe that? Now he has can't command to be obeyed. Number one, you must hear something. What must you hear? Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You must hear how Jesus Christ died on the care of his cross. You need to know about how he lived a perfect life. He died a vicarious death. What do you mean? The guilty for the innocent. Got that? They took him and buried him in Joseph's new tomb. And the third in the point in the morning, he was resurrected from the grave. About 40 days, he stayed around here. 10 days, yeah, after that, he was sent it back to heaven, right? His death, burial, and the resurrection, his ascension to heaven. Do you believe that? Do you believe that he worked? The work that Christ did on the cross, he merited all our salvation. Now, brethren, I got to preach like this. I didn't know this years ago, Jimmy. When we hear and believe the gospel, repent of our sins, confess Christ, and be baptized, we didn't merit nothing. God don't owe us nothing. Christ paid it all on Calvary. Now, who do you trust or what do you trust? Do you trust this for your salvation or Jesus? Wait a minute. Are you converted to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized? Or are you converted to Christ? Christ is our Savior, not this. Sometimes I hear folks say, just believe only. No. 
Believe faith on, faith say, but faith not our say. Sometimes I hear members of the church of Christ say stuff like this. Oh, you can't be saved unless you're baptized. You're teaching false doctrine. That's all you're teaching. That's what the Baptist said. All you got to do is believe. You're saved. You say if you don't be baptized, you can't be saved. Where did you learn that? Christ is our Savior, but we got to obey his command. Faith, hear and believe, Acts 15 and 7. You got to repent of your sins. Now, here's where we're having a lot of problems. People want to be saved, but they don't want to repent of their sins. And then sometimes they think, Jimmy, God is stupid. They say, well, I'm going to be baptized. They don't know I'm living in sin. Really? We don't have to know because we don't add it to the church. The Lord adds to the church universal. And folk who won't repent, God is not going to add to you. You may come in here, hey man. Are you ready to repent? Somebody say, I want to come to Jesus, but I don't want to lead the church. I mean, if you're in a church and not in the Bible, you got to come out of it. I was the first one, Terry Joe, to obey the gospel in my family, 1978. My dad heard me preach my first sermon. He didn't obey. But my mother heard it. And the next year, my mother obeyed the gospel. Praise the work. I saw my mother walk down the aisle, obey the gospel. <clears throat> 79. We were the only two for a long time. But she was in the Baptist church, and I worked on my mama. I said, Mother, I said, you can't. Said, no, you can't. You've got to come out. I said, no, you've got to give it up. I, I'm us. It don't make no difference. I'm on the pastor. I don't make no difference. I'm on the earthy boy. I don't make no difference. You can't be saved in it. Well, what did she do? She obeyed the gospel. She just died last year, 98, in Christ. If you're in a church not in the Bible, you're going to come out. Somebody said, my mother died in this church, and I know she went to heaven. You don't know where your mother is. God can't save your mother, and she, she hadn't obeyed the word. You ready to repent? You've been stealing? Yeah, stop. Smoking dope? I don't care if the state of Arkansas, the United States, or Washington, any of those politicians legalize marijuana, you don't have no business messing with it. The drinking either. All they care about is money. I don't know if anybody was here. We got an old meat cutter back there. He, he may have been here uh, doing the prohibition. I don't think he was here that long. But y'all know about prohibition? Well, the women got that. Got the protest and violence. Roosevelt doing his administration, cut out whiskey. It was a bootlegging. That's why the bootlegging came in. They used to take the whiskey and put it in the thing. That's what they call bootlegging. Some of y'all may still be doing <laughs> And then it got so bad, you know what they did? They said they brought it back in, and the government put tax on it to get revenue. Money. That's the way they're doing with marijuana. You got it? They're going to do it with everything because the Bible tells us for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Members of the church don't get caught up in that foolishness. If you're living with some woman that's not your wife, if you're living enough, staying with a woman, having kids and so forth, men and women, you got to change your mind. About it. You got to come out of it. If you are in the gay and lesbian movement, I don't hate you. I don't hate you, but the Lord don't like that. God doesn't like that, and you can't be saved in that. Now, you can be saved out of it. you got to stop that. Brother Sam, what are you doing? That's right. And listen, it used to not be, they, they're coming out of the closet everywhere. In the White House, they're just sick. It's, it's so sick up there, I don't know what to do. And our vice president, she loves it. Well, they, they all right. Well, wait a minute. They all right but they're not saved, and that's not good for society. Hey, man, Brother Shannon, what's wrong with you? I'm just telling it like it is. Uh, Obama, he, he, I think he was a nice president uh, with his wife and two pretty daughters, but I don't think he wanted his daughters marrying uh, 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 women. I don't think he would want that. Well, do you? Do you want your daughters to marry women? Well, they're doing it in Church of the Christ. They're doing it all over. Why? The politicians are behind it. Got to repent of that. You can't come. You got to come to Jesus. I got to give it up. 
If you're cheating on the income tax, you got to stop. <laughs> cheating on your wife, you got to stop. If you're beating your husband, you got to stop. And repent. Wait a minute. Holy stop guy one time. <laughs> Said, you've been, I've been watching you for the last two weeks. You come to that stop sign and you just do. A slow down. You never would stop. It's all boss up. Uh, slowing down and stopping, that's the same thing. So the policeman pulled out his bitty club and started hitting him on the head. He said, you want me to stop or slow down? <laughs> Are you going to repent? You got to repent. You, listen, you got to repent. You got to stop drinking, smoking, gambling, all of that's crazy. You got to stop that. <clears throat> You're getting ready to give your life totally to the Lord Jesus Christ. But once you repent, will you confess your faith in Jesus and be immersed in water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sin? The Lord will add you to the church. You'll be saved. Liberty in the Lord. In my conclusion, song leader, where are you? Come on up. <clears throat> they have somebody here tonight that need to obey the gospel. If you're here and you remember the church of Christ and you straight away, why don't you return? If you're here, need to respond. Do it right now.